Welcome to KSOC Uncensored. Last weekend, I spent a whole weekend with these wonderful people at an event in Eastern Oregon. It was a Take Back Oregon event. And it was amazing because really, in my opinion, the best part of it was meeting people like my guest today, Penny. We will be talking about gold and silver and, and really the importance and how she got into it. And we're going to get a full education here today. But I thought it was so cool. And I wanted to wanted to just touch on the fact that in 2022, I told you guys I was going to go from being a keyboard warrior to boots on ground. And that involves travel sometimes. And and I'll tell you what, the four and a half, five hour drive to Baker City, Oregon was so worth it. Um, and you're going to hear from Penny today. And like I said, you're going to get a full education on gold and silver. But if you haven't gotten active in your community, do it now because it's it's not only about it's not only about you anymore. It's about your community, your children, your grandchildren. And you really do get something from being around people that are like minded you will be brought to your feet in action. You just have to surround yourself with the right people. So without further ado, Penny, I'd like to bring you on set here. We are going to be asking you all sorts of questions today about gold and silver because I shared with you before we even started recording that I am very low level <laughs> information on this topic and it actually seems intimidating to me just due to the lack of knowledge. So Penny, thank you for taking time to come on KSOC Uncensored. I am super excited to be here with you and I'm even more excited to be able to share what I've learned since my husband and I became an associate of a company called 7K Metals. And I just, I have loved it. It's been such a huge blessing to us. And now I'm out to, as I've shared with you, educate, inspire, and empower other people with the power of gold and silver. I love it. I think that one of the most important things is to really, for us to touch on the most obvious, for me at least, and when I when I have discussions with family members, it's so a lot of us don't have trust in the US dollar anymore. There was, there still is a lot of belief that we should be using the gold standard. And I'd love for you to break down uh, fiat versus the the gold standard and, and really just give us that base level education on how we even got to where we are today. Absolutely, I'd love to. So basically the difference, well, I'll get back to the fiat, um, the definition of that. What I'd like to do is just kind of start out with the history of our US currency. And if you go clear back to 1913, when the Federal Reserve um, was established, a dollar was worth a dollar. And the reason it was is because at that time we were backed by gold. And then you right. kind of fast forward a little bit and we come to 1944. Post World War II, countries came together, actually here in the United States, even foreign countries came here. And the whole intent was to establish the ability to have a currency that could be traded, right? And so mm. the um, it was the decision that was made was to attach themselves, their currency to the US dollar. Again, the reason why is because we're backed by gold at that time. And so what that meant is every foreign country had the ability to trade their currency for the US dollar and then exchange that US dollar for gold. And let mm. me ask you a question, Kristen, do you have any idea where that gold might have been stored? Oh, gosh, my mind tells me oh. DC, but I have no idea. <laughs> right here in America. And so then you go take us forward even further into the Vietnam War era, mm. 1971. We had all of the deficits and spending that was surrounding that war, as well as we had uh, budget deficits. And so at that time, Nixon decided to take us off the gold standard. Mm. And here's the result of what happened when he decided to do that, just, just like that every not only america but every country that had tethered their currency to the us dollar immediately went into the modern day fiat currency system mm -hmm. and i want to yeah that's where we're at and that's where we've been right, right. my Mostly dad had a fiat back in the day and that thing broke down all the time 
And uh, <laughs> it really makes me wonder. <laughs> I'm like, those are crap cars. We've got a crap system. Uh, I don't even know where the word derives from, but um, couldn't couldn't help but bring that up. <laughs> that's hilarious. Guess what? I had a Fiat car too. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's hysterical. Is it spelled the same <laughs> way? A crap car. <laughs> oh They're the goodness. same spelling, right? Yes, absolutely. And so, so basically, funny. what Fiat is. It's just paper and ink, you guys. Mm. And it derives its value from what the government says the value right. is and our trust. That's it. That's it. Doesn't Not sound good. too good to me. That's concerning. No. So I want to I want to know how did you get into gold and silver? I know you grew up in Idaho. Talk to me about your upbringing and the influence that had on what you're doing today. Well, first of all, my parents were very conservative and they also taught us to be um, very conscious and prudent with the way we chose to save and or spend money. My parents were of kind of the older mindset, probably even influenced by my dad's parents, that unless you had cash, you weren't out there buying a lot of things. And right. so from the time I was five, I had a savings account. So that probably set the stage for where I am as far as sticking to a budget, um, being really cognizant of where my money's going, what's coming in, what's going out, that type of thing. And so I think all of those things influenced where I'm at today. Now, to answer your question about how I got involved, there's kind of a history to that, too. So um, I was a single mom of two little boys and raise them by myself, help them get through college, put myself through nursing school, worked for 33 years here in the Idaho area. And in 2008, when we had the stock market crash, baby boomers like me lost almost all of our wow. retirement. I mean, trillions of dollars were gone quickly. Right. And it affected the the value of your home and the list goes on. And so for me as a single mom that had, you know, built a home and done all the things I'd done to have worked as hard as I needed to work to get those kids through through college and then to try to put some retirement away to have that gone. I sat on my floor, yeah. floor and cracked my eyes out. It was devastating. Uh, I can imagine. Absolutely. So so that drove you. So talk to me about the connections that you started making or the research you started doing that really drove you to these precious metals. Absolutely. I'd love to. So it was right about the time of COVID. I could, I mean, red flags for me were popping up all over the place. First yeah. of all, it's like we go into the grocery store and we're seeing empty shelves. You can't even find mm -hmm. basic like toilet paper. What yeah. is going on here? And then because of what had happened to me with my retirement accounts, of course, I was keeping an eagle eye on those. That was yeah. a little crazy. And so on, I like to listen to my gut. It never fails me. And so I had a long discussion with my husband and I said, I feel like you and I need to shift some monies around and we need to get out of debt. Because kind of like that CCR song for those of you that love old music, you know, the one that where they say, I see a bad moon arising. I see trouble on the yeah, way. Oh, yeah, I love CCR. That was that. <laughs> and so, yeah. I'm like, yeah, exactly. So oh I said, uh uh, we're not going down that road again. And so it's just like, okay, we get out of debt. Right. What else is there? And then some really good friends from Maine called me and said, hey, Penny what do you know about gold and silver? Well, guess what? In the meantime, we were seeing it all over ads on TV, ads in right. the newspaper, ads in magazines. And so then I started doing a deep dive myself. What, you know, how is this going to work? How is gold and silver going to be something that's advantageous for us to have and why? And I right. knew we needed to get um, and kind of the rest is history. We've jumped in this in this company. I love this company. I love the founder's mission behind starting the company and um, haven't looked back. I think that's amazing. So I want to want to ask a, a question that I feel like a lot of people watching that aren't knowledgeable in this area have, and that is, okay, so w say we we start investing and we're putting our money in gold and silver, and we have gold and silver one. I'd love for you to break down 
the difference between actually physically having it, right? Or I'm assuming there's ways you purchase it and it's it's stored somewhere for you. I I love that information. But also, but first, I really just want to talk about, okay, so we're putting our, our money into this these precious metals, but what happens when we need to go to the grocery store, uh, gas station, right? Just the basics. Um, a lot of people are wanting to move away from debit credit cards so that we're not tracked. The government already has too much information. But how, how would we actually utilize gold and silver in the real world? So with our company, we have what's called a digital wallet. They actually call it sound money. And with that, not only can you purchase your gold and silver, you also have the ability for those that don't have a lot of money, they can even purchase in fractional amounts, which means if you have a dollar and you want to put that towards one ounce of gold or one ounce of silver, you have the ability to do that. And also mm-hmm. at a click of a button, you can liquidate that and get your cash back or I'm not sure. It sounds like the government wants to take us down a rabbit hole in a different direction. But as it stands right, right, right. now, yeah, that's where it's okay. at. Okay. And that's through, what's the company name again? The company name is called 7K Metals. They're located here in Idaho, actually in a town called Idaho Falls. And um, like I said, the four founders, huge hearts, none of them needed to start this business, but they knew the value of gold and silver. They're very smart, savvy businessmen. And so they decided to open up this company as an alternative to kind of what the government has planned for us. Right. right. Yeah. 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 That's big. What, what do you, what's your impression of what the government has planned for us? Cause I think we all have an idea of what's coming because we see less and less places are accepting cash. And so we're being pushed to use debit and credit cards, which we all know are being tracked. So Mm -hmm. what do you see? What's in store for us? Well, you know, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not a tax accountant. I want to make that very clear, but we get educated like crazy. Robert Kiyosaki is one of my favorites. I also love to listen to Andy Sheckman and to um, Mike Maloney. Just get yourself educated, you guys. Education is so powerful. And in doing that, I've learned the value of gold and silver. But as far as where we're at, you all put take three pennies. If you're sitting where by your wallet or somewhere where you can grab three pennies, I want you to take those three pennies and I want you to put them into your hand. Guess what? That is exactly the purchasing power of our dollar as it stands right now. And you might wow. be saying, what the heck? How did we get there? Well, I'm going to tell you how we got there. It's because any time a government, and it doesn't matter if it's the U.S. or there's other governments that have had felt currency, any time a government tries to print their way out of a crisis, Mm. using fiat money, the economy crashes. There's many, many countries that have already had that happen. And unfortunately, the United States is on that same trajectory ever since 2020. We have printed more money than we ever have before. There's a graph that when people want to see what I do that I show in one of the videos, and it's it's just, it's stunning, it's scary. actually. It yeah, is scary. Absolutely. You know what? Absolutely. There's, yeah, there's answers and there's solutions. And that's one of right. the things I love about this company. We're very solution-oriented. So I don't like yeah, to live that's in fear. Huge. And I don't Amen. want people that I know and care about to live in fear. Right. So that's, that's kind of my mission is getting out. And I will take every opportunity that I feel like is placed in my lap to open my mouth and stand strong and speak truth and bless people. I think that's amazing. You know, speaking of volatile times right now, so I want to ask you a question. So we're experiencing a global event. Many say that we are on the brink of World War III and I would happen to agree with that. Um, How do global events like political unrest, like what we're experiencing now, economic downturns or inflation, how do they impact your decision on buying gold or silver? It makes me want to buy even more of it because historically, Mm. look back in history, every time there has been a war, there's been a financial uh, attachment 
to right. the starting of that war and or being involved in it. And, you know, and I think I didn't quite answer your question. We're headed for what um, actually I'd love to share something. My husband and I are, it's as you true. can guess, very, very conservative. We take a magazine called AMAC. It's very similar to AARP, however, very mm. conservative. So I'm going to just read this because I feel like it does it more justice than me trying to just yeah. say it. Please There's do. A, there was an article written in AMAC magazine by Bob Carlstrom, and he was the president of AMAC Action, um, the Federal Reserve, and he uh, of AMAC Action, and he is stating that the Federal Reserve and Biden administration are exploring the use of a central bank digital currency system, which is similar to paper money but in electronic format. A US CBDC would be the digital version of the US dollar issued by the Federal Reserve, backed and regulated by the central bank. Frank Gaffney, a former Secretary of Defense for International Security Policies, and this was during the Reagan administration, and I loved President Reagan. I think he was so, so awesome. I wish we had somebody like him back. But anyway, he quotes, among the most dangerous of Joe Biden's many assaults on our freedom is a so-called central bank digital currency initiative. The banking crisis spawned by his administration's disastrous spending and inflation is accelerating its plan to replace cash with government controlled digital dollars that will enable the feds to control us too. And I think for wow. anybody that's awake and paying attention, you all saw what happened during the trucking convoy. Right, right. Support them, got their bank account shut down or crazy things. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want any part of that. Right. Same. Yeah, I don't I don't believe they even got their money back after all that. I believe it went to the Canadian government. So that's yeah, yeah that yeah. scary stuff. I love that article. Yes. I appreciate you reading that. It's very important. I want to ask you a few more questions here. I, I'm going to, I had put a question out to my audience on Instagram and they came back with, with some answers for me, or basically I asked them, what, what would you want to know? Right? So, so one of them is what advice would you give to someone considering investing in gold and silver for the very first time? I would say, get yourself educated, call me. I can provide some really amazing videos for the why it's important and right. how to get you started. And I like think I that's said, fantastic to be able to do that. Right, right. Yeah. That's excellent, Penny. And that's really nice that, um, as you guys may have seen, Penny put her her personal phone number and email address out there for you to be able to contact her with questions regarding gold and silver. And so um, that that's amazing. And I, I believe, I personally feel that shows where your heart's at, that you're willing to take these calls and take these emails. So that's incredible. Um, another question, how do environmental concerns factor into your decision to invest in gold and silver? The best way I know how to answer that is my husband is an agronomist, which means soil scientist. He and I have had long conversa conversations regarding that, and I personally don't let that impact me. Yeah, I'm with you there. <laughs> I'm that surprised that one even into, came up. but <laughs> That does not yeah. factor into my um, decision making regarding gold and silver at all. Because I yeah, know what happens right. after mining and some of those kinds of things. It's yeah, it doesn't factor in. Right, right. No, I'm with you on that. And that's just another angle for them to try to shut it down, right? Government. Oh, it's bad. It's bad. Yeah. Um, do you have any favorite resources or experts that you follow? Because you talked about you mentioned a few earlier. Can you reshare the the gentleman that you go to when you're wanting to learn more and do some more Absolutely. research? Absolutely. Yes. And all the time, this is one of the things that I really love about 7K because they really, truly do believe in education. And as far as the gentleman that I mentioned, I listened to Robert Kiyosaki. I listened to Andy Sheckman. And I also listened to uh, Robert or no, Mike Maloney. And that guy is where I really learned about how our banking system works. Oh my word. He has like, I think it's 12 videos where he shares about how they establish the Federal Reserve and then the central banks and the regular banks and how much money, if you put money in, oh yeah, you think your $1,000 is in there. No, no, no. 
your thousand dollars does not stay in the bank. It gets used for bank mm -hmm. loans. And it's kind of crazy how it all, I was shocked when I learned that, but right. anyway. Yeah, yeah, no, I think that's amazing. I'm coming out of a 20 year bank leadership career and Juan, I'm not on the screen, just so you know, but <laughs> just everyone's see. Uh, but yeah, so at a, coming out of a 20 year bank leadership career and I learned all of that also, it's like where really banks try to stay at 70%, they're going to loan on 70%. That's ideal, many go to 90, but if you put X amount of dollars in the bank, can and will lend up to generally 90% of what you have in the bank. And that's what they're putting out for, for loans, et cetera. A lot of people don't know that. Um, and it is concerning because when there is a run on a bank, the money is merely not going to be there like you think Amen. it would. So, you got yeah, it. It's not, not that Never easy to get in touch with. So another question came up is, are there, because some people have concerns on, okay, what if I wanted to liquidate the funds, I know you mentioned they can liquidate it back to cash. Is there any way for them to actually purchase the physical gold and silver if if they so desired? Absolutely, yes. Okay, okay. And yes. then as far as, you know, people were asking me questions about storage and security related to that. Would you recommend storing just like one would store their their firearms or is, is there something special for um, maybe temperatures when it comes to storing gold and silver? I think that I can't answer the question about temperatures. I, I know uh, where my husband and I have it. It's, it's, it's in three different areas. First of all, um, our company does have a military grade vault. I've seen mm. it. It's seven layers deep. It's armed guarded and it's protected by insurance. That's one option. If you choose um, to have, we have some benefits that are attached to uh, getting involved with this company. If you choose that, then you can have the ability to open an IRA, a regular IRA or a Roth IRA with transferring some of your, your monies from your fiat uh, investments over to hard assets, gold and silver, and that gets stored in a depository. So that's mm, the okay. third second. And then the third option is I know some people store it in their gun cabinets. My husband and I have a heavy duty um, safe. So ours is kind of scattered. Yeah. Talk to us about where you see gold and silver and then where you see cryptocurrencies. That's, I'll, I'll just be honest. It's another topic. I'm not very knowledgeable on cryptocurrencies, but I did get that question and really where you see of both course. going. You know, I myself have chosen not to be involved in the cryptocurrency world. I feel better about having a tangible asset, a hard right. gold or hard metal that I can actually hold in my hand. And gold and silver have maintained their purchasing power for over 5,000 years. So I mm. guess my simple answer to that is I would much rather have gold and silver any day over cryptocurrency. Yeah. Yeah. No, that makes complete sense to me. So I'm curious. When you're when someone is buying gold and silver, how does one decide if to buy gold or silver, or should they do an even split? What what suggestions do you have when it comes to the actual purchasing and what quantities? That's a great question, and I have a great answer. So one <laughs> of the things that this company does, there's a whole. I think it takes an hour, maybe even a longer than that, um, that goes over um, purchasing gold and silver and they help you understand what kind of buyer are you. There's five reasons to get your hands on gold and silver. They help you discern what that is. And then it even goes a step further. Like for my husband and I, we wanted to protect our assets and be um, just hedge against inflation and be in a better world than depending on our fiat currency. So um, it showed us which kind of metals we should get as far as the amount that depends on your budget and um i know some say that you should do at least 10 percent i'm going to be honest with you we've done more than that and i know many other people involved in this company have as well okay that's that's good information there um i want to ask what are the tax implications that go along with buying gold and silver there or possible the, i know you're not yeah, an accountant or a cpa but like just experience wise, yeah. what have you experienced? So again, that education that I shared with you goes over 
like I know, for example, this is just one example, gold and or silver eagles do not have a tax implication if you sell those. So they, mm. they go through all of that too, all of the different um, elements that are available to you because there's, there is the, the, uh, oh, the collectible side. And then there's also just, you know, the regular silver and gold that aren't considered collectible. Okay. So. That's lots, lots to learn out there because it is, there's a lot of complexities to it. And I think it's an incredible area that didn't I hear you say, I believe at the event, you said less than 1% of Americans own gold and silver. Is that correct? That is correct. And that's why we're all on a mission. I mean, the founders, just to share with you their heart, they they decided they could see a need to get average people an opportunity to get their hands on gold and silver. Their mission right. is to get it throughout the world. Every person have the ability to have the purchasing power of gold and silver. And we are an international company grown like crazy and and I love it. Hopefully that's I could obvious. See why. So it seems like it's a, it really is in, because so many of us don't feel comfortable with the banking system. I mean, we just saw Bank of America was giving the FBI customers names um, that, that flew into DC or purchased plane tickets around January 6th. Again, my 20 year banking career tells me that is against every regulation put in place. Um, as far as customer privacy. So a lot of us don't have that trust in the standard banking system anymore. So it really sounds like this is a way around it where you you do have a card that you can go to the the grocery store, the gas station, you can make your purchases, but you're just not putting your money into a banking system that is going to fail any month now. Well exactly and look at what happened in california the banks got shut down right that right be, you're right i think there's going to be i i speculate that there could be a, a domino effect of that i don't know what your thoughts yeah. are about that involved yeah in the banking or i wasn't happy that they bailed them out printed more money bailed them out because it was you know the the wealthy um they generally don't don't do that for just your average joe or jane but um yeah so that's that's yeah, it's going to happen more and more often. Um, last question. We have one minute here. What is the most interesting or unexpected thing that you've learned from owning gold and silver? The most unexpected. Wow. <laughs> I would have to say just the peace of mind that it has mm. created for my husband and I and our whole goal to answer you for our why was to create financial independence from a government Amen. we do not trust. Yes, and we, we do not trust them. Right, right. Yeah, that's beautiful. And I, I'll tell you what, this has been an amazing experience because again, this is something that I told my husband, I'm like, I'm an imbecile when it comes to this category, <laughs> just merely not because I, um, I can't really understand it's because I've really just I haven't taken the time to do the research into it. But it really is something that we as Americans who do not trust our government any longer need to take the time to look into. Uh, I believe Juan's going to flash up your phone number and email again on the screen. And where can people find you outside of contacting you? Um, what is the can you give us one more time the name of the company and the company's website where people can go and do their research? I provide a website that actually is attached to me once I've shared some of the initial information. First of all, the history that I shared with you guys today, and then the details about 7K, then I give you my website. That's kind of the best way to do it, we found. But yeah, I that's the best way, is right there. Back, Penny learn a lot. She'll give the resources to you so you can do your due diligence. Excellent, Penny. Thank you so much. It was an absolute pleasure meeting you last weekend. I guess it was maybe even two weekends ago at this point. It's flying, but uh, absolutely incredible experience. And I'm so glad that you took the time to come on and help inform our listeners. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning into KSOC Uncensored. We will see you next Thursday.